Hey gang, we're looking today at nitrogen steels. So, what is a nitrogen steel? It's a steel with a nitrogen in it. it. Does most of the edge hardening and forming and that sort of thing. You call them carbides when you do carbon steel. These are nitrides or carbonitrides, um, as the uh, wooden home resources say. So, Shannon Steel Labs has made two knives that are more or less the same. This one has a slight ramp to it, but in terms of edge geometry, the same. In terms of Rockwell hardness, are the same. So 60 Rockwell on both of these knives. One is in Zfinet, which is LC200N, a different name for it. And one is Vanax Super Clean, which I'm told is a new steel. So fairly new steel. Um, they used to make Vanax 35 and 75. This is the one they're making now. So this is just Vanax. And it is a more advanced steel than this in terms of their recipe, at least. So this is a steel that is basically just a bit of carbon, a bit of nitrogen, and some chromium forming the carbides, uh, or nitrides, as you would call them, I guess. And I get really good results out of this steel. It seems to perform as bad, about as good as LC, as LC 200N, <laughs> as s 30 v those sorts of things, approaching like LMAX levels of, of good edge retention, whilst also being almost impervious to rust. So really impressive stuff, LC 200N. Um, does best with a high polish I've found so far, but still nothing to snort at just from the factory. You'll get some good long edge retention. Um, there is nothing too exotic in this, apart from nitrogen, obviously. It's a quite an exotic concept as is, but in terms of other carbide formers, not too many. What Vanax does, however, is uh, triples the nitrogen content. Triples the nitrogen content, and also adds vanadium, so 3.5% vanadium. And that's what you are getting in something like S35VN and things like that. So vanadium is a really good um, edge hardener and it makes different sorts of carbides or nitrides or carbonitrides or whatever Uden Home are calling it, they call them carbonitrides. Mm. Um, that will uh, increase your edge life. So very, very cool. So more advanced, and I'll put the stats up of both on the screen, say now. I'll do like the comparison graph maybe. Actually, I can't find a comparison graph because it's not on the app yet. It's that new, it's not on the app. But anyway, let's do a comparison to up here. All right, so uh, first stage of testing, I've tested it with both of these knives with two different types of edges. So I've already cut a lot of rope. I was gonna do this as one giant ass video, but it would have been an enormous video and it would have been like another few days. So first half, we're looking at the work sharp edge and we're looking at the 17 degree toothy finish edge on both of these. So work sharp edge, what is that? It's where I get my work sharp knife and tool sharpener and put a 20 degree convex bevel on these knives. You'll see the bevel in this shot that I'm showing you right now. And it is a, um, it's not a nice looking edge because I didn't go all the way to the heel or to the tip because I didn't want to round over either of those things, which you can do with a workshop. But you see the difference in grind height and whatnot from the factory edge. And um, it makes for a very, very sharp, very, very utilitarian edge that is very strong. So I got to cutting with the Z Finet first. And I found that with the Z Finet, it cut through the rope 230 times before it no longer bit into a stiffly held piece of paper, which is my benchmark for when to stop the test. It ain't perfect, but it's all I got. I've run out of arm hair if I did the arm hair test. I do a lot of these. So that was a very cool result, about what I was expecting, um, about the same as like your mid-tier or low-tier powder steel. So good stuff indeed. This is an electro slag steel, by the way, so it's not even a powder steel. It's made using some exotic processor or another, but um, yeah, there you go. So LC200N slash Z Finet did 230. So then I got my Vanex out and did a cut test with that. Same edge as the as a Z Finet, same rope, same everything. And I started cutting. <laughs> And it cut through the rope 300 times, which was a very cool baseline result for this test and this steel. So thinking of other steels that have got around that mark in the workshop era or, or the workshop section of my tests, you're looking at steels like uh, S110V, um, M4, uh, I mean M390 got a little bit more than that, um, those sort of steels, uh, ZDP got a little bit more. 
Um, XHP got a little bit less, so it's definitely up there with the sort of the not the ultra high tier super steels like the Maximets and whatnot, but definitely up there swinging with the big guns for sure. And that's really impressive for a nitrogen steel and for a new steel. So very, very cool. So the next thing I did was I erased that work sharp edge, which took a little bit of time for both of these knives using the KME, the Beast Diamond Stone. So the KME is an angle sharpener, which you fix the knife in and you fix the angle. And you check the angle first, and this one is 17 degrees. Uh, the knives are just the right height to be just 17 degree bevels on the lowest setting of the KME. So I put 600 grit finishes by working up from 50 grit to 600 grit, put 600 grit finishes on these knives, which I feel is about what factory edge bevels will be, between 600 and 1000 grit generally. And these are very sort of reminiscent of factory looking bevels, maybe even a little bit steeper or a little bit shallower, whatever the word is. So um, in my experience, making the edge shallower and making it a V has made the edge retention versus rope longer. So then I did my rope cut test once again. Now, the Z finite with this uh, particular edge cut through the rope 390 times. So thinning out that edge and adding the V has definitely helped. Not sure about adding the coarse edge. I think still we might be looking at better with the polished because that's what LC200 ended. But 390 is a good result. Spyderco is out of interest, did I think about 400 and 30 or 440 or something like that, so a little bit more, um, but not so much more with these numbers. It's a percentage of about, maybe it's a 10% difference or something like that. So uh, that could be anything from heat treatment to just me stopping the test and the paper just, you know, cutting differently or whatever. So, you know, these aren't fucking exact, I don't have a, I'm not an atomic tester. All right, so, um, but yeah, definitely a good result with the toothy edge and nothing to sneeze at at all. Real interest came with the Vanex. I wasn't sure if the extra, when you start adding things like vanadium to steels, um, the extra you know, exotic carbides often do prefer a little bit of tooth to them on the edge. So, you know, most people uh, will stop at a thousand or something when they do with, you know, high speed tool steels, for example, like K390 or M4 or whatever. Um, this one, however, is about on par with, say, your S35 in terms of its exotic carbide form content or nitride formers, but then the nitrogen is different, so there's a lot of different going on. So I did my edge cut test, and I was happily um, surprised that it got about in the middle of what I thought it would do, to be honest. Um, it got 550 cuts through rope before it no longer bit into a held piece of paper. Now I must note with both of these edges, these were by no means dull when they finished. They were just not grabbing and you know, cleanly slicing a held sheet of paper. You could still use these to cut most things in your everyday life without any issue, still glide through plastic and all that sort of stuff. So they, these aren't dull, they're just, it's a point of my test where they stop. So 550 and 390 respectively for these steels. So Vanex definitely does seem to have a fair boost on the LC200 and slash Zfinet so far. So that's my testing, the first part of these nitrogen videos. Uh, I'll get to the second part when I can get more rope and get more arm back, because the thing about these new tests is, because I'm using the KME, um, that's also, <laughs> my arm gets a bit sore a bit quicker now because the KME is a lot of this and then the cut test is a lot of this. So, I mean, I'm going to have a massive arm, like by the time I'm like, <laughs> um, uh, by the time I'm done, you know, the next probably 20 or so of these, but yeah, I'm going to have to do something with this to, to balance it out. Any ideas? Clean. Um, so yeah, we are going to uh, continue the testing with polished edges next. Then we're going to do some impact testing and then we're going to go to the max with old mate. Oh yeah, he's been out of the loop for a little bit now. Old mate Tormek McGee here is gonna have a crack at putting some crazy extreme edges on these steels and seeing how they go. All right, all right dudes, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, these steels definitely do appear to be not the sole future, but definitely part of the future of steel with these nitrogen based alloys. If you can be rust resistant and cut like that, then you're pretty good in my book. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.